Hi guys, welcome to another video. We're uh, on top of the world here at something like 1500 meters above sea level in the Victorian high country, camped in amongst all the snow gums. My final night of a four night trip. You can just see right behind me there, the sun just starting to peak above the surrounding mountains. And if you wanna find out how I got to this point, then uh, please stay tuned. Lots of uh, photography and just beautiful scenery all along the way. It's uh, about 6.30 in the morning and I am down in a place called Bago State Forest. It's uh, just before sunrise now. I'm walking out to a uh, little clearing that hopefully has got a nice little bit of fog sitting in the valley there or in the gully. And then the sun's going to rise up over that. So as you can see, we're actually getting a bit of nice pink over that way. Uh, what I'm doing now is throwing on my four-stop graduated filter because the sky is quite bright and I don't want to uh, overexpose it because it's got some really nice colours in it. And I really want to get that mist out in that valley nicely exposed. I'm currently at f11, shooting at 1.6 seconds. And I'm probably going to have to bracket this image. So I'm going to focus out on those trees initially. So you can see now the sun rays are starting to come across and hit this grass here. And all that dew, it's just looking beautiful. Welcome to Paddy's River Falls. As always, when I'm shooting waterfalls, I'll use my polar, circular polarizer. Um, what that does is remove the wear off the water. Because you want to be able to see the texture in the rocks, the, uh, the rocks through the water, you don't want it to be big white sheet. Looks awful, so that on there. The uh, first issue with waterfalls, all that mist on the lens. So what I usually do to get around that is between shots, throw a cloth over it. Um, but with this one, there's so much water coming down and so much mist, there's not a lot I'm going to be able to do. So I'm just going to have to clean it between each shot and hope for the best and hopefully be able to remove any little water dots um, in post. So this composition down here is what I'm going for. You see it probably better on the back of the screen there. Um, as I just cover up my lens. Um, but yeah, essentially this little cascade or rapid in the foreground leading up to obviously the main subject of those absolutely stunning waterfalls. Uh, you can see now, the reason I got here early, you can see the sun creeping down this hill here. And when that side lights up, it's so hard to get a, a balanced image. It all just looks blown out over there, too dark over there. So yeah, get here early in the morning really is the only way to make this work. So I uh, thought I'd try bumping up my shutter speed slightly. So I've gone up to half a second, uh, just taking a test shot and straight away, it's gonna be hard to see on the screen here. But you can see these bits here, the highlights, just completely blown out. So, um, that's what I'm talking about with water that's moving really, really quick. It's so, so easy to blow out those highlights. So I always, when water's moving fast, underexpose my images. At the moment, at one sixth of a second, sorry, my camera was telling me I was two stops underexposed. So that's obviously quite a bit. So what I will maybe use, so that half second exposure, if I need to, I'll use that in my foreground to bring that exposure up slightly. But honestly, I don't think I will. Shooting raw, the range on this camera is pretty good. So I think even two stops under, I'll be able to bring out the detail in these dark rocks without too many hassles. So 
you can see even at one third of a second, a histogram there looks like it's over towards the shadow. The camera's telling me I'm two stops under exposed. So I'm going to um, take a test shot at that and see if it blows out those highlights as well. Eddie. You've got to be very, very careful with water flowing this fast, especially now that the sunlight's hitting the top of it, like that. It's so, so easy to blow it out. Anyway, I think that'll probably do me here. Um, done what I came to do. Got here first. No one, I didn't have to share it with anyone. Didn't have to wait for people to get out of the way. Get there early, always. This is the Southern Cloud lookout. It's named after a plane that crashed on the mountain ranges that we're looking at from this lookout. And it was uh, disappeared. It crashed basically over that way in the mountain range. It's 23 kilometers to that, to that peak over there. And it crashed over there, um, I think 38 or something, 938. And then it wasn't found until 1970. So, um, oh, and here's the coach. <laughs> it wasn't found until 1970 by a fellow working on the Snowy Hydro scheme. And he said he, if he didn't actually stand on the wing and it moved, he never would have found it. Uh, just crossing the mighty Murray River. It's not such a mighty crossing, this one. It's a very small little bridge. But the crossing anyway, it's, um, you can see it's looking fairly swollen. But now we are officially in Victoria. So here we are coming into Coriong, the home of the Man from Snowy River Festival. Um, I think yeah, last year it was cancelled obviously, but yeah, every year they have a, a big bush festival and all sorts of activities. I think it's in February or March, something like that. Um, but for me, this is just a, a stopover today. I'm planning to uh, head south, hit the dirt, head south towards uh, Omeo Falls Creek area and uh, perch myself up on top of a um, mountain for the sunset, hopefully tomorrow morning sunrise. So I'm still heading south out of Coriong and I've hit the dirt a couple k back. It's getting pretty rough. This whole thing doesn't uh, necessarily absorb the bumps as well as some modern or modern designed vehicles. So I'm going to drop tyre pressures down to touring pressure. Um, for me, that's about 28 on the front. And because the rear is carrying so much weight, you maybe around 32 on the rear, something like that. And that should give me a much more comfortable ride. This is uh, obviously some of the devastation. This is a little look out along the road here. Just Everything, as far as the eye can see, is just torched. The fires have just smashed this place. So, I'm heading south and pretty much everything to my left, so east, is closed. All the roads have got roads, roads closed signs on them. Um, I believe that is still from the bushfires over a year ago. So that just gives you some indication of how smashed around this place got, that it's still all closed down a year later. Just pulled up here for lunch. I think this is the Gibbo River. Um, but yeah, beautiful little grassy spot there. There's campgrounds all along here. Um, it is part of the Alpine National Park. But yeah, absolutely magic little spot. I'm just following a little walking trail down to the river now. And you can see how nice the river is. Beautiful little swimming hole. 
yeah nice little swimming hole just there against those rocks sort of rapids be a good trout hole actually got a ripping spot to stop for some lunch well, I'm not that far out of Omeo now, but rather than stick to the main road, I've decided to uh, take a little detour down to a spot called Taylor's Crossing. Uh, there is a water crossing there across the Minamita River, um, and it can at times get very, very deep. So I'm going to have to suss it out. There's a rock in the middle, and if the rock is submerged, then basically you're not crossing. But uh, if the rock is above water, then usually it's okay. Um, and the, on the other side of this crossing, there's a little hut called Kennedy's Hut. It's one of my favourite little spots because it's a hut right on the river, beautiful swimming in front of it. I've caught fish in the river in front of it before. Um, so I really want to go and check it out. It, it, it was one of the few, or not one of the few, but it luckily didn't get burnt down in the uh, bushfires last summer. Um, so I'm keen to just go and have a look and see if it's still in as good a condition as I remember. Crossing looks fine. I've been here before where all of those rocks out there are completely underwater. That's obviously not the case right now. It's looking pretty good, very, very crossable. So doing the long section of windy, windy tar from Omeo uh, across to Falls Creek and uh, driving at the moment across um, Bogong High Plains and just absolutely stunning area. There's, as you can see, all the um, snow gums across the ridge tops and then just this open grassland. It's just so stereotypically alpine. It's just awesome. Um, I think... Coming across the top there, I'm at about 700, 1700, sorry, meters above sea level, which is nice and high. I didn't even know this was here. I was just driving along and I've stumbled across this stunning little creek. And if you look up there, you can see a nice set of cascades. So I might uh, go for a little wander and see if I can get to those. Because they are beautiful. I think I'm going to have to walk around rather than up the creek. Sometimes you just get lucky. I didn't know this place existed, I've just literally driven past, had a look and gone, wow, that looks amazing, I better stop. At the same time as this cloud cover's come over up here, which means that there's really dappled light over there in the background. So I was able to get a shot using the waterfall as a leading line from the sort of uh, corner of the image. Really, really cool shot. Really like that one. Um, yeah, all right. Let's keep going, see what else we find. Welcome to the highest drivable peak in Australia.
This is Mount Mackay. Views for days. At 1,849 metres above sea level, it is the highest drivable peak in Australia. And that is Beer O'Clock. We're probably 20 minutes or so before sunset now and it's uh, rush hour. I had it the whole place to myself an hour ago and now there'd be another well, eight or nine vehicles up here. Um, but anyway, we'll carry on. I've got my spot so that's all that worries me. I've got my um, tripod down here set up quite low um, and the reason for that is if I set it up high you're just looking at a view and a view is not a photo, a view is just a view. So I've got it set up nice and low using that little plant there that's just catching those last few rays of sun as a foreground interest and then obviously out there in that pondage. something just so relaxing about just standing still in silence watching a sunrise obviously getting the camera out and capturing it's a uh, bit of fun too but it's the quietest part of the day always sunset up here last night there was oh, probably 20 or 30 people at one point and now at sunrise there's about three Just so much quieter, so much more serene. Well, there you go, those fellas just tested the water for me. But, uh, I've decided, had to go into Mount Beauty, my, uh, forgot, my, I forgot to bring my laptop charger. So, as a result, oh geez, that water's cold. Um, I couldn't back up my, um, SD card from my camera and was either going to have to buy a new SD card or be able to charge my laptop so that I can delete stuff at the end of every day. So, what I did was found the little hardware in there's got a, a J car partnership or dealership or something. So they um, they managed to or they had a a 12 volt laptop charger. So perfect, problem solved. I've detoured via Mount Beauty. Didn't want to go the highway out to Bright and then up the car to Mount Hotham. So instead, I've come a back way. Um, there's a dirt road that comes out the back of Mount Beauty. And it is a ripper of a dirt road, as you can see. There's obviously that water crossing those fellas just went through. It's a couple of nice little campgrounds back down there, but yeah, really nice little little creek. So this is lunch. This is a uh, sneaky little spot that a mate of mine told me about or showed me uh, a few years ago now. Uh, and being Easter obviously everywhere is packed. But I've managed to sneak in here and sure enough it is empty. So um, I've got the pies going for lunch. So 
I'm going to crack them out. So I got one of these bad boys years ago, I think from Dick Smith, for like $17. I think you can still get them for about maybe 30 to 50 bucks, something like that. Obviously they're, um, they're no travel buddy, but that's a pie in the bush cooked to perfection. It does take a bit longer than the uh, travel buddy. Um, <clears throat> these take more like sort of two, two and a half hours to apply, whereas the travel buddy is like half an hour tops, but beat that. So coming off um, Dargo High Plains Road, I've turned onto Ritchie Road. Um, no real plan other than to head towards sort of the basalt knob area purely because I know that it's up at around 1500 meters and I'm hoping for some decent views. Same as the previous two nights, just going to uh, head for a peak basically, try and get something with a view, preferably east and west, but one or the other will, will suffice. I'm going to, um, it's only quarter past three now, I'm going to try and head to camp a bit earlier tonight, uh, actually get a fire going would be nice, because the last two nights I've rolled in too late and been busy running around or there's been too many people or whatever so I haven't bothered so going for a campfire tonight wish me luck got down to that creek and as it turns out sign right there 25 mile creek so uh, yeah look at it. it looks lovely beautiful clear water Woo! it's not warm it's a nice little creek Nice little set of rapids up there. So this is the problem with uh, well, after bushfire. Well, the problem for me anyway. All this grass, native grass. You see how steep that hill is, by the way. But all this native grass normally would be, you know, a speck on the ground that long because the uh, canopy wouldn't allow it much light but the fires have come through the grass has seen sun for the first time in who knows how long and it's just gone woof and all the grass is now halfway up my window so um yeah i don't think we'll be camping up here tonight i'll have to go somewhere a bit more bare i think anyway the search continues well this is a little bit sad i um just come up towards basalt knob and that's what's left of basalt knob hut it used to be a um an old train carriage but obviously the fires got to it and yeah that's all that's left it's pretty sad i think um losing huts like that i mean no one's ever going to drag a train carriage up here again and replace that so that's now gone forever which i think is pretty sad oh. big day on the tracks today is um driving for about nine hours um, and the majority of that on dirt so pretty well knackered so deserve this oh plus I cleaned out the fire from the last gooses that left cans in it in the bin people morning it was a pretty mild night last night which was obviously the way it was going to work out being the only night that i actually had a campfire um but anyway the sun's coming up now over this way through the trees over there but we're getting some quite nice light over these mountains sorry over these mountains over here through all these dead trees or burnt trees so um I think I grabbed a little phone image from um, top of the sway, uh, top of the rooftop tent there. And the problem is with the camera down here, it's a bit of a shit tip to be honest. People have left toilet paper everywhere. It's the ground's pretty awful. You want to get up above it. So my next option is to climb up on the roof, but 
I think instead I'm going to walk over this way towards where the sun's rising and there's all these dead trees over here that um, I'm hoping this grass isn't quite as long through here and I can get up above it Ooh, easy enough and just try and get the sun peeking through this um, I guess burnt forest I just opened up to 16 mil uh, and pointed the camera further down to get more of this sort of burnt foreground here I'm still gonna focus stack one on the grass one on the trees and close that off. This is the helipad for the South Basalt Knob track. I've driven this track once before and I remember it being very, very steep. Drops all the way down to the campground at Talbotville there. Um, we're just gonna basically drive straight through that and keep on going. Plan is to drive today, I've decided, through Talbotville, up Cynthia Spur to Wanangatta um, Valley, straight across through there and then up towards Craig's Hut and try and catch a sunset up there tonight. Um, how we'll go, it's quite a way off road um, and some of those tracks, Cynthia Spur and Hearn Spur dropping into Wanangatta Valley in particular are very, very steep. Um, so they're not quick, but we'll see how we go. Um, that's, the, that's the aim anyway. I've, I've left camp nice and early this morning. I was gone by before 8 o'clock, so hopefully we can get across there in time for sunset and catch sunset at one of the iconic landmarks of Australia. Bottom of uh, South Basalt Knob Track, and we're just at the first crossing of the Crooked River. What a beautiful little river. And this, uh, this sort of signifies the start of the uh, entry into Talbotville, which is only another K or so up ahead. But yeah, ripping little spot. So this is the last river crossing into Talbotville and in a second you'll see how busy Talbotville gets on a weekend, on an Easter weekend. After that steep little climb up our uh, station track, we're now on top of Mount Cynthia Spur and there's just views all the way over that way and then probably better even over this way. 
just stunning. And you can see out there just all the crisscross of tracks that are all through the mountains and hills out there. They're just everywhere. I'm just here at the junction of Hearn Spur. This is that really, really steep track. And uh, I know the camera never does it justice, but there's the car. And there's the track disappearing down the hill. So steep, so, so steep. So anyway, as I said, I don't know how much filming I'll get to do down the track, but you can just tell it's, it just drops away to nothing, <laughs> just disappears down the hill. So I'll see how I go, but worst case you might just have to take my word for it. I'm mindful the whole time coming down Clone Spur as well, not to uh, use the brake too much because there is a river crossing at the bottom. So here comes the uh, river crossing. It's only very shallow at the moment by the looks of it. it. Must only be a few inches, maybe six inches deep. It is a beautiful river if you look upstream. to Wanangatta Valley. Um, as I said, I just wanted to pass through quickly. Uh, it's getting quite late and Craig's hut starting to look like a bit of a pipe dream. So I'm not even going to stop. I just thought I'd do a quick drive-by show you the valley. So just while I'm uh, passing through the valley, I thought I'd uh, give you a little bit of a history, or just very briefly, on um, the sort of spooky history of the valley. So um, Google it or look it up. I think uh, Tim Bates actually did a YouTube series on it, got all about the Warangatta Valley murders. Um, there was a whole series of unsolved murders down in the valley there of people that lived down there. Uh, and then on top of that, more modern spooky history, uh, there was a young lady that died there in a four-wheel drive accident um, uh, several years ago now, I can't remember exactly. And then obviously more recently, and it's been in the news, the um, couple, well, couple, the guy, married fella and his lady friend, um, that just vanished and their tent was found burnt down, their car still there, keys in it, locked. Um, yeah, just vanished without a trace and we're, s I think, a bit over a year, year on now and um, yeah, still not a trace of them. So it's got, a, it's got a bit of a history, this valley of taking lives uh, without much explanation. So yeah, anyway, don't have time to spend much time there today. So we'll have to do that another trip. So I'm uh, on the King Billy track, heading up towards uh, Bluff Hut and then trying to cut across to Craig's Hut. I think I'm uh, pushing shit uphill basically. I don't think I'm gonna make it the sunset but anyway I, uh, I couldn't resist driving past this without showing you just how beautiful this little creek here is by the road come up just come across this um little creek crossing oh look how beautiful that is <laughs> anyway so i'll come across this and there's this um log at the exit here it's almost like a little rock step Obviously my plan was to reach Craig's hut. I'm still about, oh, I don't know, 50 k's away. Uh, and we've got 20 minutes or so before sunset, so there's no way in hell I'm making it. And as it would happen, um, 
just in time I've stumbled across this absolutely gorgeous site up amongst the snow gums top of a hill just absolutely stunning what a spot and I'm hoping the, the moon's probably going to mess things up again but we might get just a little sneak of Milky Way tonight before the moon ruins it and look at this for a subject what a tree just stunning Yeah, so I'm loving this. I'm actually doing sort of a reverse sunset now. But look up there, absolutely magic scene. Those gums just catching that bit of orange light, the road snaking through the image like that. Ah, oh, just stunning. And I've got this, this big snow gum here um, in the sort of corner of my image. So I'm focusing on that. Um, that F16, so that should keep everything sharp enough. But, I might also grab a focus of one of those far trees just to make sure everything's tack sharp because this is a cracking image. I've hit the tar and this marks the uh, end of our trip. I've just got the very long tar run home now. I'm just airing up. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this one. It's been a real good time for me. We've seen some really stunning places, driven some cool tracks. It's been a great trip for me. Um, hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as I've enjoyed filming it. And thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>